My name is Norman Olsted, and I wrote a memoir called Crazy for the Storm. The plane groping through the fog heading for a ski resort in the mountains above Los Angeles went down yesterday morning. For hours, helicopters searched for the wreckage and survivors. As it turned out, there was only one, 11-year-old Norman Olstad. His father and the pilot killed in the crash. Another passenger, Sandra Cressman, killed as she and the boy slid down a hillside. Well, my father, um, you know, he planted these seeds in me and and he helped he helped develop them the skills in in the water and in the mountains so he sort of prepared me for this day unknowingly this day on the mountain the plane crash you know i never gave up my dad never taught me never to give up <laughs> i grew up on topanga beach in malibu and uh, it was uh, i was born in 67 but the 70s were where i was old enough to really remember a lot of this stuff and the beach I grew up on was uh, a nude beach. It was also a place where uh, some of the best surfers in California live and a whole host of really interesting characters. And then you have my father who was in the FBI and then worked under Robert Kennedy, assistant uh, district attorney. So he was like a completely different kind of character, but everybody lived together in this little cove on a beach. And the one thing they shared was they loved the ocean, they loved surfing, and they loved the freedom of this, this world they had created. Uh, or they couldn't get the radar guys at the control tower, and they didn't know what was going on. And then suddenly we just saw these trees and crashed. And I just, I tried to wake my dad up, couldn't get him, or the pilot. Young Norman and Sandra, 30, figured they could not survive the night, so they tried to get down the mountainside. The summer before the crash, when I was 10, my dad and I drove from Topanga Beach to my grandparents' house in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, taking the ferry across the Sea of Cortez and then through the jungle to Vallarta. It took several days and it was scorching hot and the roads were ragged and jagged as we had to sort of survive on water one day because there was no places to stop. And then we got stuck in the mud on this jungle road and had to be pulled out by burrows. My father also coerced me into the gnarliest waves I'd ever surfed. And it was there, at this secret spot that we found in the middle of nowhere, that I got my first tube ride. At the top, it was really icy, and Sandra was trying to too, but she had a broken arm. And, um, and she, then she slipped, and I tried to stop her, but she went right over me. I saw that she was really badly hurt, you know? I thought, oh no. But then after a while, I knew I was going to make it. You know, I don't know if my father was right or wrong to raise me the way he did. But when I delve into those memories, extracting the details of backcountry skiing with my dad, him driving me to ski steep, icy runs to make me a better ski racer, taking me to hockey practice at 5 in the morning every weekend, coercing me to face my fears out in the surf, it doesn't feel reckless. It feels like life as I know it. My father conditioned me to feel comfortable in the storm. And that's why I made it down the mountain alone, because of him, because of what he taught me and what he put me through. So I take my, my own son to the same place my father used to take me. You know, if there's a storm or it's cold or windy, he doesn't, he doesn't always want to go. And uh, so I have to push him a little bit as my father pushed me, but I don't push him the same way. Not quite as hard. Uh, I allow him to make his own terms. Okay, so we'll just go for one run. My dad would have never gone for that. 